as two members of Legacy. Whilst everyone thinks, you know, you get out of bed every day, you talk about video games, this must be the dream job. Like, what people don't understand is shout casting can be hard. Don't expect this to be an easy journey. You will suck. Everyone sucks. There is no gospel behind shoutcasting. You don't have to do anything. This is just a starting point. The rest is up to you. Vice has teleported in. 20 seconds. Carver's gonna do the impossible. He has to put up a captain's performance against three people. Redemption might be the item that saves him here as he clears out the wave. He's going in, but FBI's on the turret himself. Sin will lose their support. Carver gets one kill. They're on the turret. FBI's kicked back. He's gonna get taken down. Cupcake is here. They get the Nexus turrets, but Carver saves the game just for a little bit longer against Sin. He's trying to take down flares. He overheats. Play-by-play -play casters, they're the yelly men, as Atlas so fondly referred to them all those years ago. They bring the hype, they bring the excitement. The energy, the drive, they're there to tell you what is happening. And when action happens on the screen, they yell it at you in an incredibly loud voice. Third inhibitor gonna go down. Yeah, Wally actually knocked towards Swiffer, who has to use wild growth and the flash, but he still dies. Dominguel who gets a double kill, Raid is dead as well. Wally picks up the kill. Where? The color caster is the analyst. They're there to give an informed and educated and professional opinion about why things are happening in the game. When something isn't happening, the color caster's role is to then talk and set up what could happen. There's a lot of misconceptions about uh, the two different casting roles. Uh, unfortunately, the play-by-play -play caster draws the short end of the stick. You know, they're considered the, the dumb hype guy or, or uh, they don't know anything about the game. That's actually completely false. A, a lot of the greatest play-by-play -play casters have a really good read on the game. I mean, if you're casting, you know, 30 hours every single weekend, you probably know quite a bit about League of Legends. But they understand that that's not their responsibility to the cast. And they're there to set up the ball for the color caster to come and spike it down with their knowledge. They know what they want to talk about, when they want to talk about. So they're there to, to drive and control everything. Effectively, they're really the puppet master, and the color caster is just there to dance for them. Before the game starts, it's up to you to let the viewers know what is important. The more they know, the more engaged they will be as the game plays out. You have to be able to tell them why they should stick around for, you know, your 10 minutes of rambling plus seven minutes of champion select before they actually get to see any gameplay. And this is also going to be able to connect them to the gameplay that they're about to see. I mean, anyone can go into client and can hit spectate and watch high elo solo queue games. That's a feature that Riot's put in. You're not doing that. You're trying to give them something else. You're trying to give them some backstory, something special to be able to watch this particular game of League of Legends for the next one to three hours, which is a big time investment to people and is actually crucial in success for shoutcasting. What patch are we playing on? What league are we playing? And what are these teams? Who are these players? And what are the important champions for their tendencies? We need to set the stage and more importantly, the stakes. The audience has to understand what is expected here so they can be engaged in what the outcome will be. Every game this weekend, Sin has been involved in every single one of them. All of them have gone to five. And you know what, Fish? They've won every game five so far. So why would they change things now? It's all like a giant funnel where you start wide and you work your way in. You will talk about the league itself, then the teams, then the players, and then what is at stake potentially between all of the above. And that way you bring it in nicely to the champion select. One of the most basic mistakes people make is they just start reeling off champions at the speed of light. This has been banned, bang, bang, bang. All of a sudden they've picked these two things. Wow, the picks are flying through. And, and they forget to just talk about why they're picking that or why this is special. Or is there anything odd going on right now that you didn't see coming? Or have you predicted the whole champion select and then you can really start flexing your muscles as an analyst and being like, because they've picked Renekton, the other team's going to pick Jarvan because they like this matchup and the player's a great Jarvan player. The picks are on the screen and the viewer doesn't necessarily need you to say them all out loud as they happen to understand what is being locked in because they can see that. And sometimes it makes more sense to talk about what a pick means or what pick will come up next so that you're able to engage the viewers more as they already know what's locked in. After all is said and done, take a deep breath, take a step back, and just tell the audience and set up the expectations, this composition or this team can do this with these weapons, and this team can do this with these weapons. 
Early game in part is the downtime where the color caster will take the bulk of the talking and, and they want to set up things like the key players and the places to watch and the win conditions of the teams and, and everything that feels important to you as casters, this is the best time to talk about it. Key things to pay attention to are going to be jungle pathing, matchups, uh, player tendencies, uh, early itemizations, back timers, and it's really important that while the early game feels slow, it feels like a lot of viewers almost tune out during the early game. You know, they're waiting for the, the mid game, the Baron fights, the dragon throws, things like that. That the early game should be treated like setting up a chessboard. You know, you're, you're watching the players set up their tactics and, and set up their strategy and their plays to execute on later on. What we do know is if Fizz gets behind, it does become a little bit irrelevant. Yep. However, if he stays ahead of the curve, is a legitimate 1v1 threat at every stage of the game. The goal of the early game from a caster's point of view is to let people understand how the team wants to play the game. All of that preparation that you did for early game, now it's time to cash that in. Mid game is about understanding when teams want to execute on those strategies. Did all of their preparation pay off in early game? Or are they trying to recover from a massive plunder and try to dig themselves out of the hole that they created? It's mid game, it's kind of a, a doctor's checkup point. Chiefs need to start buckling up. They need to come online with their stronger team fight composition. There will be a part of this game where you just cannot team fight against what is an Oriana Nautilus combo. But that part of the game is just so long away, Fish. And before that even dreams of happening, you're going to have a split pushing cannon that's just annoying to deal with, as well as the fact that you've got a fed Syndra, a fed Karzix, and we already talked about the pick potential. Things just look like they're in Sin's favor right now. Generally, laning phase is over. They're starting to group, or they're going towards, you know, their ultimate 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-4 one, kind of composition. And they're trying to play specifically towards their win condition but they're not at late game yet. They don't have all their items, you know, maybe they're on two, two and a half items around that mark. And it's generally between, you know, the 18 and 28 to 30 minute mark, depending on how quick the game is going to be played. The biggest thing here is mid game is more about golden resources than time in the game. Late game is just whenever people have full builds. Mid game is any time after the laning phase until that point. So the color caster who usually dominates the early game does start to sit back just a little bit more. The play-by-play -play comes up and they start to match each other in how much they're talking now because the mid game is more of a conversation. It's more of a who is winning, questions are being asked, why are they winning, and the color is then answering. And things that you'll want to revisit in mid game are going to be uh, win conditions, key players. You know, did that guy go off in the early game with his early game champion or did they set up the late game split pusher for success? Did they fall behind? And on your early game predictions, it's totally fine to go back and kind of reevaluate those. And if you got them right, reinforce that and then carry that on. And now what does that mean for the late game? And if you got it wrong, totally fine. What went wrong? Why was your prediction, you know, suddenly taking a right turn? Late game is where the play by play takes the lead. This is all about the energy following through with the momentum and letting all of the viewers know that this is the moment where everything is on the line. Play by play, it's your time to shine. This is going to be the big, massive, brawling team fights, which means your hype, uh, it needs to match that tempo, that drive, that uh, escalation to the conclusion of this game. Your job as a caster at that stage of the game is to go along for the ride. This is where you should be seriously invested in the game. You should be enjoying it as much, if not more, than every single person at home, because this is what you're paid to do, to sit down and watch kick-ass League of Legends. And if you find an equal late game, you should be so stoked that you're going to be able to cast it. Flares, he's dashed on in. Juice is gonna get a body bot for himself, and they're gonna be able to tear apart the cheese squad one by one. This could be the game, Fish. All of a sudden, 30 second death time. There's only the Renekton left available. He goes back, he's gonna look for the teleport back in. Creep Rave already here. Sin could be knocking out the Chiefs. Are they gonna do it? Are Sin gonna continue their Cinderella story run? The glass slippers have come off. They're trying to escape by midnight and they're knocking on the doors of their home. The pumpkin, it's not falling apart anymore, but the Chiefs are gonna damn try their best to stay in this one. Final Nexus Tower is done. The Nexus That's it, is it's over. This is going to be the first best of five series the Chiefs have ever lost. And Sin will take on Legacy tomorrow. Your play-by-play -play caster, they're talking probably 70 to 80% of the time. They're delivering all the hype. They're telling you what's happening. And then as a color caster, you're just trying to ride that high. You're not screaming over the top of him. You can't do that for that long. But 
as the action's happening, you're showing that you're genuinely enthused about everything that's going down and that one more mistake will cost a team the game or could cause glory for the other team. Go and find VODs, mute them, cast over them, listen to them back, go and spectate your friends, cast over their games, uh, download your own replays, cast over that. If you want to be a shoutcaster, you should be shoutcasting. I mean, no one walks up to a singer and asks them how they should be a professional singer without at least bouting out a ballad or two along the way. And that's what you should be doing. You should be casting your own game. You should be casting your friend's game. If you have the internet speed, you should be streaming your casting. You should be asking for feedback. If you don't, you should be uploading during the night and getting people to watch it and give you feedback anyway. You should be casting pro games with the sound muted. You should then go back and watch your own cast. You should have a webcam on you so you can see what you look like. Because the whole package must be there for you to make it in this industry. It is so fiercely competitive. Everyone loves watching video games and lots of people would love to get paid to talk about them. It's a long road. It's one of uh, very critical self-reflection. You know, the, your number one enemy will be yourself. And that's actually really important. You're going to get really good at tearing yourself down, at looking at every little wrong thing that you do in the cast. And then when you start getting more exposure, when you start getting more traction, the community will also be very good at tearing you down and, and telling you everything that you do wrong. But it's really important that you're also great at building yourself back up. Again, this is a, a labor of love and a passion. And we do it because we love doing it. So yes, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be bad casts. Everyone has them, even on the international stage. But always just take a breath. Think critically, review what you've done, and move forward.